today we'll be going over chapter 21, which is allergy and anaphylaxis. As always, our national uh, EMS education standards and competencies. Some of the things that we'll be talking about today, immunology will be uh, will be mostly what we'll be talking about. So we'll be talking about the recognition and the management of and difficulty breathing related to uh, anaphylactic reaction or yeah reactions. Uh, anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology assessment, and management of hypersensitivity disorders or emergencies, anaphylactic reactions as well be something else. I know um, we've had numerous discussions about hypersensitivity uh, disorders or hypersensitivity to certain drugs, uh, especially in children. So like a uh, must my son, for example, um, his uh, his mom, my wife and his mother um, still thinks that he's got an allergy to augment. However, um, most of the time children do have a hypersensitivity to augment a lot of a lot of and I'm not saying most, but a lot of children have a hypersensitivity to augment, but they grow out of it. So there are certain there are certain things that you may have a hypersensitivity to or an allergy to, but you can grow out of it later in life. Doesn't mean you're always been allergic to it. Uh, and you know that goes for food and different types of stuff. Uh, medications is definitely no exception to that. You, you know you can actually grow out of that. You can develop you can develop a hypersensitivity uh, or an allergy to it later on in life as well. Uh, that's why there are some there are some drugs that we administer that we we go ahead and give something to possibly counteract that just in case you know we'll give them benadryl or something like that uh, because could be a likelihood that they are allergic to it why take the chance at that point so we'll go ahead and prep for that so just some things to think about just because you're allergic to it once doesn't mean you're always allergic to it just because you're not allergic to it, do, to it doesn't mean you can develop or you can't develop an allergy to it all right, introduction. So as an EMT, you are, you are going to respond very often to calls that are involved or that involve allergic reactions. So allergy related emergencies can involve things like acute airway obstruction, cardiovascular and cardiovascular collapse. So as an EMT as well, you have to be able to treat those life-threatening complications, right? So you must also be able to distinguish between the body's usual response to an allergen and an allergic reaction. The uh, So this chapter, what it's going to do is it's going to describe uh, immunology, which is going to be the study, as because it's one of those ology words, right? It's going to be the study of the body's immune system and also the five categories of stimuli that may provoke an allergic reaction as well. What happened? No, that's not what I wanted. So bad at this today. All right, I hit I hit the wrong button. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> anatomy and physiology. So the immune system it protects the body from foreign substances and organisms right so when a foreign substance invades the body the body initiates a series of responsive responses to the inactive uh to the to inactivate the invader All right, so the patho, so pathophysiology. 
So an allergic reaction is an exaggerated immune response to any substance. An exaggerated immune response. It's just the body is going way overboard what it needs to to be able to mitigate the situation that it's in or the situation it's gotten itself into. So it's not going to be caused by an outside stimulus, uh, so such as like a bite or a sting. So it, it is caused, however, by the body's immune system, which releases chemicals to combat that stimulus. So the, the it's not so much the outside stimulus that that is the that caused the allergic reaction it's the reaction to that outside stimulus that causes the allergic reaction whenever it's trying to combat it so those chemicals uh they're going to include uh chemicals named histamines and then uh leukotrienes so both of those are going to contribute to that allergic reaction So some patients, they may not know what is causing the allergic reaction. So you have to be, be able to remember or be able to recognize uh, the signs and symptoms and maintain that high index of suspicion. So an allergic reaction, it may be, it may be mild or, and local. So it could be mild and local. You might see a little bit of rash or anything like that. So a small area of hives, something like that. Uh, and it could be like itching, redness, some tenderness maybe. And then it can also be severe and systemic. When it becomes severe and systemic, that is what we, that is the condition that we call anaphylaxis. So anaphylaxis is going to be an extreme life-threatening allergic reaction. All right, so anaphylaxis, it involves multiple organ systems, multiple. In some of the severe cases, it can rapidly result in shock and death. Now remember we've talked about before allergic reactions, you know, that systemic, that systemic problem that it can have is that you can you start to go in shock because now all of your all of your blood and fluid and everything else it goes interstitial spaces or your veins, your peripheral veins uh, dilate, which harbors all, all the blood in your body and those peripheral veins or vessels or at the first of the skin and everything else. So all that blood's away from your core. So it's away from your heart. It's away from your brain. So it can actually it can actually cause like hypovolemic type symptoms. Right. You know, that shock variable there. Almost like you're losing blood, but you're actually losing blood inside the larger, you know, the vessels that are now larger and it's not maintaining as well. All right, so some three common signs uh, for this. You have, you have uticaria, and uticaria is just a, it's a fancy word for hives. This picture here, this is uticaria, the hives. water or something you know what's going on all right so uh some other some other signs of this are going to be angioedema so areas of localized swelling and wheezing you can see your patient here so amazingly enough i have seen this uh in I have seen this type of swelling in certain blood pressure medic medic uh, medications. Somebody may have taken this blood pressure medication. It's just certain ones that I've seen it more so than not in uh, patients that take the blood this bl blood pressure medication and end up developing a sensitivity or end up having an allergic reaction to it.
All right, so Strider, or you talked about wheezing, then you also have Strider. So Strider can be heard on inspiration if there's an upper airway narrowing. Wheezing is lower airway, Strider is upper airway. You can also have hypotension, uh, hypotension due to that vasodilation. As well as you can have that increased capillary permeability that causes that blood to go to pull out there as well. <laughs> You're having an allergic reaction to something in regards to oak tree or poison ivy. So I, I do know people that are allergic to different types of trees and stuff like that. That, that would be so miserable down here because there's so many different types of trees. Um, poison ivy, that's highly likely that could happen. Yep. So some other symptoms that you can have also nausea, vomiting, uh, and abdominal cramps as well. All right, so some common allergens. So the most common allergens fall into one of the five categories, the general categories that we're, we're going to see here. So you have you have food. So certain foods, um, an example would be like shellfish or peanuts. They it it may be the most common tr trigger for anaphylaxis. So some symptoms of this, uh, that it may take more than 30 minutes to appear, and it may not include skin signs like your hives or your urticaria, right? Are we doing any chapters tonight? What's that? What's that mean? So the uh, the reaction to this, it, it can be severe and involve the respiratory and or uh, cardiovascular systems. The medications for this, so or medications that can also be have you know allergen allergenic properties or that what causes allergens or are allergens. I mean, so medications are going to be the second most common source of anaphylactic reactions. So particularly your antibiotics, such as like your penicillin, like you see here and uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, NSAIDs. So can anybody tell me huh. – can anybody tell me what exact what is a – what is a brand name of an NSAID? Can somebody tell me Advil. some popular NSAIDs? Go ahead. Advil. Yep. Advil. Naproxen. Naproxen. Yep. So, so some of our popular NSAIDs out there can actually be an allergen for some people. That's why I always say it's always be careful whenever you're somebody you know tosses you a headache medicine or anything like that. Just pay attention to what you're taking because if you start to have a reaction to it, then you'll know. And also pay attention to uh, different types of medications for stomach issues, stomach bleeding, or GI tract problems, anything like that, recent surgeries, stuff like that. Pay attention, those NSAIDs. All right, so if the medication is injected, the reaction may be immediate within 30 minutes, and it can be very severe. So that's a lot, a lot of times if we have to do injections, we – follow up or we'll give a uh, we'll give a medication beforehand so reactions to oral medications uh, it may take more than 30 minutes to appear but they also can be very severe so you got to just when like I said make sure that when you ask somebody do you have any allergies that's why it's very important to make sure that you ask that question uh, just in case something happens
All right, plants are going to be another one. So dust, pollens, and other plant materials uh, that can cause rapid, severe allergic reactions. You have uh, some common plant allergens that are going to include like your rag, your rag word, ragweed, ryegrass, maple, and and what was this one right here? Hmm, interesting. There you go. All right, then you also have chemicals. So certain chemicals and like your makeups, your soaps, your hair dyes, uh, latex, and that's, you know, a lot of people use nitrile gloves now or um, some other materials. I don't see many latex gloves anymore. I don't see a whole lot of them anymore. Every now and then I run across a box or, you know, somebody's got some, mostly nitrile. All right. Insect bites and stings. So this is one that we always, uh, we always discuss when we get somebody that's been snake bitten. Uh, envenomation. So envenomation. So that's going to be the process of an insect injecting its venom. And that, not all the time does a, like when we talk about snakes envenomating, uh, not all the time do they envenomate. Sometimes they bite and they don't envenomate. And then you get antibiotics. They just load you down with antibiotics uh, because, the, because the infection is real at that point. That's why it's good that whenever you do have somebody that's been that's been bitten, you mark off where they were bitten at, and then you take where the outside, the perimeter of the swelling, and you mark it. Mark it with a pen, the outside of the perimeter of the swelling, and put a time down. And then as you're doing the rest of your stuff, after five minutes, right, you'll five minutes, you'll look, did that swelling grow? If it grew, remark it again in that area, put that time down. So you can see as you're trying to get this person where they need to go, you're tracking how fast that, that swelling is happening. All right, insect sting. So approximately 2 million Americans are allergic to the venom of bees, wasps, and hornets and the allergic reactions to the two insects stings accounts for at least at least 62 deaths a year in the United States. So in about half of those uh, in about half of those deaths the victim had never experienced reaction to prior stings. So just that one time they all of a sudden now they're allergic That's crazy. So it's talking about the stinging organ of the insect. It's usually a hollow spine projecting from the abdomen. So talking about honeybees, we just watched the bee movie the other day with uh, Jerry Seinfeld. So honeybees, they cannot withdraw their stinger. So if the stinger is not removed, it can continue to inject the venom for up to 20 minutes. Uh, wasp and hornets can sting multiple times, but your bees, pretty much the insides, get ripped out of them whenever they try to fly off or you slap them out of the way. All right, ants, especially fire ants, they strike repeatedly. So the bites from you can have allergic reactions to those. Uh, my little boy, back when he was about three or four, I, I don't know what he did. He must have stood in this ant bed. It was at, there was a jumpy castle at birthday party, and it they ate his little legs all up. I felt so bad. Uh, he was ate up. His mama still gets upset about that. All right, so some signs and symptoms for the insect stings. Uh, sudden pain, swelling, localized heat, widespread urticaria or uh, hives, remember? 
and then redness in light-skinned individuals. And then also you may have some uh, itching and possibly a wheel. So in more severe anaphylactic cases, patients may experience strider, bronchospasms and wheezing, chest tightness, coughing, uh, dyspnea, anxiety, GI complaints, and hypotension. Hypotension, so the low end, right? All right, occasionally respiratory failure can happen as well. So if it's untreated, anaphylactic reaction can proceed into death pretty rapidly. So we got to make sure that we take care of that as soon as possible. If we do have the medications to be able to alleviate that, then we want to make sure to administer them pretty quick. Uh, other than that, getting ALS there or uh, rendezvousing ALS as soon as possible, uh, whatever we can do to get them to that higher echelon of care so they can get the medications that they need. So more than two thirds of patients who die of anaphylaxis do so within the first 30 minutes. So we see there that's pretty serious. Yes, yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's take a 10 minute break and then we'll come on back. Yeah, and that's where we talk about that swelling. So when you have that flash edema, the airway gets, and then also that hypotension, you go into those shock symptoms as well. Yeah, and that flash edema can, can it's like a flash pneumonia, right? All right, where are we at here? All right, let's take a quick 10 minute break, a 10 minute, 10 minute break, and then I'll see y'all in 10 minutes. All right. All right. All right, so the patient assessment in an immuno immunologic emergency So first off, as you know, come up, we'll, we'll do it like whenever we do our patient assessments, we do them like we're sitting in front of an evaluator, right? So as soon as you come up on scene, you say scene safe, or I'm sorry, BSI is my scene safe, right? Standard precautions is my scene safe. That's where you start off. That's like, that sets the whole scenario into motion, right? Um, and then from there, you move on, make sure the scene is safe. They'll give you some sort of prompt, scene is safe, or they'll say something's going on, what have you. Um, <clears throat> the, patient's, the patient's environment or recent activity may indicate the source of allergic reaction, so pay attention to what's going on there. So if, they're, if they've had a sting or a bite or food allergy or new medication regimen, something like that, 
there may be signs around there. Some evidence of that. So also, uh, also be mindful of some other potential cause of respiratory, respiratory distress. So respiratory, a respiratory problem reported by dispatch may be an allergic reaction. So anytime they they call up and they're like, hey, we got a respiratory issue, hey, respiratory distress, you know, breathing trouble, something like that, it could be an allergic reaction. So just start thinking about that on your way out, right? So until a field impression of an allergic reaction is firmly established, you got to be mindful of some other potential causes of respiratory distress. Some of those can be a traumatic injury that can also be present secondary to the medical emergency. Uh, also, make sure you're following your standard pr uh, precautions with a minimum of gloves and eye protection. Uh, also, make sure to consider the need for additional resources such as your ALS personnel. All right, for your primary assessment, you're going to quickly identify and treat any immediate life threats, uh, immediate or potential life threats, right? So uh, your ABCs or XABCs, like we talk about all the time, make sure there's no major bleeding going on, and then check your airway breathing and then your circulation. Um, it should be reassessed repeatedly throughout your transport. So for these allergic reaction patients that are unstable patient, uh, that would be our five minute, right? So you form a general impression of the patient, sick or not sick, allergic reactions be present as a respiratory condition, or it can also be a cardiovascular distress in the form of shock. So if the patient is going to be anxious and distressed, you want to make sure you immediately call for ALS backup if it's available. Doing the work. Yeah. Doing the work. <laughs> so. If the patient is anxious and distressed, you immediately call for that ALS backup, right? So also look for medical identification tags if the patient is found unresponsive or is unable to answer questions. So if you can find those tags or bracelets or necklaces or what have you, that may be very helpful. If they even have. All right, getting into your primary assessment still with your airway and breathing. Anaphylaxis can cause rapid swelling of the upper airway. Not all allergic reactions are anaphylactic reactions, though. Uh, quickly assess for increased work of breathing, the use of accessory muscle use, head bobbing, uh, tripod positioning, nostril flaring, and abnormal breath sounds. We talked about those abnormal breath sounds, your wheezing, your strider, things like that. So you want to assist the patient into a comfortable position, uh, generally in the high fowler position to maximize, uh, to maximize their ventilations. If signs of shock do emerge, uh, you want to immediately place the patient in a supine position as tolerated, if they can tolerate it. Uh, for patients in severe respiratory distress, you may have to assist ventilations using a bag valve mask, uh, and you want to make sure that you attach that to high concentration of oxygen, that 15 liters a minute. Undo percent. All right, for circulation, some patients with your anaphylaxis uh, may present with signs and symptoms of circulatory distress, such as like hypotension. So we want to assess for those signs of hypoperfusion. All right, also, as always, treat for shock because shock is much easier to prevent than it is to treat. So we want to make sure that we do that all the time, right? Don't treat shock when it hits. Let's be preventative in that fashion. Always treat for shock. 
So for anaphylactic shock, the uh, preferred medication is going to be epinephrine. All right, for your transport decisions, if anaphylaxis is suspected or if a relatively mild allergic reaction appears to be worsening, uh, immediate transport is definitely warranted. If the patient is calm and doesn't exhibit any severe symptoms, uh, you can consider continuing the assessment, but you may want to err on the side of emergency transport. So what I would tell you is just go because things can go from good to bad to worse you know in pretty quick time all right your history taking you want to invest that's when we start getting into our sample and opqrst stuff right uh so we're going to investigate that chief complaint and then the history of the present illness and then make sure we identify all of our signs and symptoms of allergies, medications, past pertinent history, last oral intake, and events leading up to. All right, so there's a table uh, that shows additional signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction. All right, just went over the signs and the sample history. We want to make sure that we've also had they had they completed any interventions. Have they ever had this in the past? Those are pretty important. Uh, be alert for any suggestions of ingestion of foods can cause common allergic reactions or can commonly cause that. Inquire about the presence of GI complaints such as nausea and vomiting as well. Your secondary assessment, your physical examination. And so if it's indicated, you can perform a rapid exam of the body from head to toe or conduct a physical examination that's focused on, on the areas of the chief complaint itself. So like when we're talking about uticaria and stuff like that. Um, so if the patient is unconscious or, or otherwise unable to communicate, then we want to make sure that we remove remove the clothing as necessary and look for the presence of any type of bee stings or signs of contact with any chemicals, uh, <clears throat> you know, any bites or anything like that, uh, just some uh, or any other suggestive clue to a reaction. So also look for that medical alert tag that could indicate a severe allergy issue. Uh, you can auscultate for abnormal breath sounds, such as when we're talking about the, the wheezing and strider. Make sure that you carefully inspect the skin for any swelling, rashes, or that uticaria or hives, right? All right, your physical examination. Continuing on with your vital signs. So assess your baseline vital signs. So that's going to include your pulse, your respiratory rate, your blood pressure, your pupillary response, oxygen saturation, uh, some signs that may be unreliable indicators of hyperperfusion as some of those signs may be not very accurate for it. So they can vary pretty widely. Uh, or they can be hidden by rashes and swelling as well. So skin signs may not be as reliable. All right, monitoring devices. So pulse ox can be useful at checking that patient's uh, perfusion status. So the decision to apply oxygen should be based on airway patency, work of breathing, and uh, abnormal lung sounds on auscultation. 
not solely on pulse oximetry re readings. Not solely on it. All right, for your reassessment, in route to the hospital, you'll repeat your primary assessment, uh, taking the patient's vital signs, repeat the focused physical examination of the affected body system. So if they're unstable, five minutes. Uh, if they're stable, 15 minutes. Watch for any signs of shock. We're going to prevent it, right? And treat immediately if it is present. But we're going to do our best to prevent it. All right, for your interventions, so the treatment is going to be determined by the severity of the reaction. So mild reactions may require only a supportive care role uh, uh, and monitoring. Anaphylaxis, which is a severe allergic reaction, right? It requires a more aggressive treatment. So this may include things like uh, epinephrine and ventilatory support. So make sure you always recheck your interventions, even if the patient is experiencing relief. Uh, we need to transport the transport to the emergency department is going to be warranted because the the medications effect that you have it will wear off and symptoms will return will return with your communication documentation you need to include your signs and symptoms found during the assessment uh, reasons why you chose the care that you did, and then the patient's response to that treatment. All right, so the emergency, the emergency medical care of immunologic emergencies. So if the patient appears to be having a severe allergic or anaphylactic reaction, uh, we want to make sure that we administer BLS and provide prompt transport to the hospital. Bing, bang, boom. Administer BLS, prompt transport to the hospital. If a stinger is present, you can scrape it off. Uh, so like with using the edge of a stiff object, like a credit card or something like that, do not use tweezers or forceps. Can anybody tell me why you don't? You may not want to use tweezers or forceps. Because you might push in the stinger. Are they? Yep. You could, um, but Squeeze also remember we talked about with bees, um, the the sac yeah, that like holds the venom, venom the holds the venom. Yep, you may squeeze that venom right down in the stinger and into that into their body. So scraping it out is going to be the best way to go. So make sure you gently wash the area with soap or some sort of mild antiseptic. Uh, remove any jewelry because it's swelling, right? <clears throat> so if we can remove that before the swelling begins, uh, you want to position the injection site slightly below the level of the heart. And then also to slow that swelling down, also apply ice or cold packs to the area, but not directly on the skin. Uh, for more than 10 minutes at a time. Also, some other things you want to be alert for is airway swelling. Uh, other signs of anaphylaxis would be like nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps. Uh, don't give the patient anything by mouth. Do not give them anything by mouth. So place the patient in a supine position as indicated and give oxygen if needed. And then monitor the patient's vital signs. Be prepared to provide further support. All right, epinephrine. So what does it do? So epinephrine is a sympathomimetic, sympathomimetic hormone. So what it does is it mimics the sympathetic fight or flight response. So what what that does is it causes the blood vessels to do what? Constrict. 
So that's going to reverse vasodilation and hypotension. Some other properties of epinephrine are going to be to increase that cardiac contractility and relieve bronchospasm in the lungs. And it so it, it it can rapidly reverse the effects of anaphylaxis. But remember what we talked about. We still want to make sure that we transport those patients because or uh, because those medications will wear off, right? All right, so epinephrine is going to be prescribed by a physician. It comes in a pre-dosed, and it comes pre-dosed in an automatic epinephrine injector, or what we call an EpiPen. So some EMS symptoms or symptoms systems are authorized to carry epinephrine as part of the regular onboard medications. In others, though, EMS providers may be permitted. In uh, excuse me, in other systems. EMS providers can be permitted to help patients administer or self-administer their own medication. So always make sure you refer to your local protocols and consult your med control. All right, so the adult EpiPen system. So the adult EpiPen system delivers 0.3 milligrams of epinephrine via a spring-loaded needle and syringe system. Uh, the infant, the infant child system, it delivers half that at 0.15 milligrams. So in your skill drill, shows you how to do it. Always be careful. You don't want it puncturing through your finger. I've seen it. It's not any fun. Not any fun for the person doing it. It's almost entertaining for somebody that when you're watching somebody do it. Uh, epinephrine can have an effect within about one minute. So it's going to be a primary way to save that life. So if someone has a severe anaphylactic reaction, you have the availability to use the EpiPen. You can use the EpiPen via, you know, whatever your protocols are, or what MedControl says, then that can make a huge difference. Yep. Yeah. Always used to say, uh, orange to the thigh, blue to you. Orange to the thigh, blue to you. But then I could see how people get that confused because they would think blue to you, like you as the patient. You'll find out quick. You'll find out soon enough. So here's some side effects of epinephrine. Whole laundry list of side effects, right? High blood pressure, increased pulse rate, anxiety, uh, cardiac arrhythmias, pallor, dizziness, chest pain, headache, nausea, vomiting. My slides are so small here, I'm having to squint to see all of them. All right, so you don't want to give uh, epinephrine to certain types of patients, right? As always, the contraindications, right? So patients without signs of respiratory compromise or hypotension who don't meet the criteria for a diagnosis of anaphylaxis should not be given epinephrine. Hey, we're already here. Wow. All right, so let's do this. Let's uh before we get into our practice assessment, let's take a quick 10 minute break and then we'll do a practice assessment. Somebody's gonna do it tonight. 
Um, Y'all just figure out who wants to step up tonight. Y'all have been doing fantastic. Remember, we got the guide still for a little bit. Yeah. This one right here, is that one you're talking about? Slide 50. Good to go. All righty. All right, so we'll take a 10 minute break. We'll come back. Y'all figure out who wants to who wants to be the victim tonight. We're talking about anaphylaxis, so it's going to be an easy one. All right, so give me 10, 10 minutes on the clock. Maybe. Where is my clock? Somebody took my clock away. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start this, and then I'll look for it. There we go. All right, see y'all in nine minutes and 31 seconds. All right. <laughs> Who wants to give a shot out? A shot at it. Who wants to take a shot at it tonight? All right, come on with it. Is my mic working? It is. Oh boy, okay. I'm so happy it's working. <laughs> All right, here we go. So starting out, Got a call from a 19, uh, got a call from a 19 year old female, uh, possible allergic reaction. Oh, 
So, 19 year old female with a possible allergic reaction. Yep. So, I'm going to start with my Cena Safe BSI. Yep. All right. So, you've got your gloves and safety glasses on. Uh, you're inside the dining room. There are no immediate hazards at this time. Okay. Then, now I am going to determine. The mechanism of injury or the nature of illness. So right. she's having an allergic reaction. Yep. So uh, she had a sudden onset of difficulty breathing and facial swelling and hives or uticaria after eating a, a meal. Um, and there's only one patient, right? One patient. Okay. And because she's had, she's definitely sick. I know that's in the next part though, but um, we know we're gonna go ahead and transport and we're gonna make find out what she had to eat and how long ago she ate it. Is that when we would go into the OPRQRST like now instead of later? No. Because nope. it's so in we're, a black so, that could Okay. Yeah, so sorry. Yep, no, sorry. <laughs> so additional resources right now, and since this is anaphylaxis and she is Having difficulty breathing and everything else, are we going to consider ALS? Immediate trend. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Um, and then you got your C spine next. Did she, she's still uh, sit, she didn't fall, nothing like that. So we're not really considering okay. that, right? Okay. okay. All right. On to the next slide. Now you're in the, the primary survey and resuscitation portion. So you said the general impression of this patient was that she's sick. Uh, yes. So what you, you do see is a 19-year-old female. Uh, she's sitting upright, and she appears anxious and in respiratory distress with noticeable facial swelling. All right. Okay. <laughs> What's sorry, next? I'm writing everything down too. No, um, sorry. Oh gosh. Okay, so now we're gonna, we got that part, we got that part. We're gonna determine her level of responsiveness and consciousness, okay. even though her face is swelling. What if she can't talk though, because her face is swelling? Um, we'll see that. I mean, okay. we'll, we'll see that when we go through it, right? So uh, okay. she is alert, but she appears to be in significant distress. So um, what, I, so what I always look to is that glass scale, coma scale. So um, she's a she's a four, five, and six. So being four, five, and six, what does that make her GCS? Apparent life threat. Yep, she's nope, she's fifteen. She's fifteen. That's what I was getting at. So she's okay. got a GCS of fifteen. She's got the high score. So she's uh her eyes open spontaneously. She's oriented and she obeys commands. Four, five, and six. All right. Um, okay. her chief complaint is going to be difficulty breathing, uh, facial swelling, and hives. All right, what would you move on to next? And you've been doing it the whole time. You just kind of moving into uh, it now. Then we're going to go into the the ABCs. That's right. All right. So, what are you looking for there? Um, her skin color and the temperature. Hold on, go, I mean, go back to airway and breathing first. So okay. airway and breathing, what's the very first thing we look for? If there's anything blocking her airway? Yep, airway patency, that's right. Okay. Um, it, does she have a patent airway? So her airway is narrowed and wheezing has been noted upon auscultation. <clears throat> and then what do we do, look at next? So she she does have a she she's got a narrowed airway. Um, appropriate like her oxygen levels. Is so her breathing. Yep. Yeah, so we look at her breathing. It's rapid and shallow. Um. So what would you so in seeing that she's having difficulty breathing, what would we do? Give her oxygen. There you go. Uh, okay. We'd administer oxygen. What? How would you want to do that? Um, 
Everybody likes the nasal cannula. But since she's right having one? difficulty breathing, so since she's in, yeah, since she's in distress, what do we want to what do we want to do? The bat. Mm, I can't remember the name of it, but the one that goes over her face with a bag on it. Yep. So the non rebreather, okay. non rebreather mask, yeah. and uh, we set that at what? Since it's a non rebreather, we're gonna just set it all the way up, right? Yes. So 15 liters a minute. Okay. All right, now we're on to circulation. What are we looking for there? That's what we're looking for. Her skin color and temperature. And okay. we're going to check her pulse, make sure see where her pulse is at. Okay, so she's got a rapid and thready pulse. She's pale and cool with widespread hives. All right, what's next? All right. Um, and then go ahead and start transport. Absolutely. So she's okay. a high priority patient and we need to transport immediately uh, with ALS support and consider epinephrine administration if we're able to give it. <clears throat> and who do we check with for that? Or what are what are a couple things that we need to do if we uh, have epinephrine? Your medical support people. Yep, so your offline or online med directions, right? Yes. All right. All right, what, okay. where are we at now? And then we're going to start the history taking. Okay. And that's the OPQRST. Okay. Is that right? Okay. How would you break that down? Um, we'll start with when did it start or how did it happen? So it started about 10 minutes ago, suddenly 10 minutes ago after eating. Okay. And then does anything make it feel better or worse? And get rid of the pertinent red pertinent negatives. Okay. Um No, nothing makes it better or worse really. Um she was eating a salad with nuts in it. That's all she can really tell you right now about that. <laughs> okay. Um, as far as pain, if ask her if she's having any pain associated with the swelling. Uh, no, there's no, there's no pain associated with it. Just, uh, just the swelling. It's been getting, it's been getting harder to breathe, and she says it feels like something's squeezing her chest. Okay, um, and then you are, you just said the radiation region, that's where it's the pain in the chest, right? Yeah, that'd be the, okay. so the pain in the chest, the squeezing in the chest or the pain of the squeezing in the chest would be the, the quality. The, okay. Because it's a description of the pain or what's going on. The description of is for quality. The severity okay. is getting hard to breathe, um, no radiation. Uh, it's been worsening since it started, and that's that's it right now. Okay. Okay, but I thought the severity pain was like the one to ten pain shot pain. Severity. Scale. That's yeah. I just read it off because there's no one to ten. Just okay. harder to breathe. It doesn't really have a okay. pain, but it is an issue. There is an issue there. Okay. Okay, and and then the time like. Mm. Uh, it's just been uh, just been worsening about ten minutes since it started. Okay. Okay. So then that will go into this. Then you go from OPQRST to the sample. Okay. Okay. So, um, is it what are the signs and the signs and symptoms? The difficulty breathing. Difficulty breathing. Yep, difficulty breathing, mm -hmm. uh, facial swelling. And do you have any known allergies? Peanuts. <laughs> Peanut allergy? 
Mm -hmm. um, do you take any medications for that? Uh, no. no, no, I do not. Um, do you have an EpiPen that you t have for the allergy? I do not. Okay. Um, as far as past medications, have you ever had to take anything for it in the past? Have I ever had a past history of this? Yes. Yeah, I had a mild allergic reaction to peanuts before. But they're so good, though. Peanut butter and jellies. Um, and then the events leading up to the history, that was where she just said she was out eating, right? In the salad? With the nuts? Yeah, so she was eating it. She was at the house eating a meal that contained those allergens. Okay. That's everything on that one. Okay. Okay. So then we start the secondary assessment. Do we, we didn't have vital signs earlier, right? Not yet. Okay. Okay. So with her swelling, and I guess I'm confused on when to give the EpiPen or assist her with it. She doesn't have it. And with med direction, if we have one on with us, can we have her, uh, can we give it to her then with med direction? Sure. Because she is having an allergic reaction. If, if you want to, but w one thing that I always do, I always check on a few things before I give any medication, right? Okay. So then we're going to check for her ABCs again. Okay. Oh, that's um, okay. So and get their vital signs. Okay. So um, her vital signs are going to be blood pressure ninety over sixty. Her, okay. her pulse. So her initial blood pressure is ninety over sixty. Her initial pulse is one twenty and thirty. Her initial respiratory rate is twenty eight, rapid and shallow. Uh. I mean, I have a BC, or I have a CBG here of 110. Not real concerned with that though. Uh, her pulse ox is 92, and or original on room air was 92. Her capnography is 30. Uh, on your lung auscultation, she's uh, wheezing was noted throughout all the all the lung fields. So now getting those, what is your general impression of this patient? She's having an allergic your, your reaction. Field, your field impression. I'm sorry, your field impression. Okay. So that's the allergic reaction to the peanuts, correct? Okay. Yep. And then your interventions would be what? Interventions would be if med direction would give us the, the EpiPen or let us administer okay. that while we're en route to taking her to the emergency room. Okay. And your and what else was another intervention that you were giving her? Oxygen. Yep. And then uh, so and then also the continuous monitoring, right? Yes. Okay. Um. So after you do any type of intervention, what do we want to check? Uh, the reassessment every okay. five minutes to make sure she's not getting worse. All right. So after the intervention, you checked um, to see how it was doing. Uh, you have a blood pressure now of 100 over 70, a pulse of 110, respirations of 24, SpO2 of 95. Well, 28 well pressure. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm. Um, Hold on, I'm swapping it over. All right. You said every five minutes for your uh, reassessment? Yes. Okay. And so now you have made it to the hospital. Nurse Karen Good. says, uh, Hospital, what do you want? <laughs> Me. Um, we have a patient, a 19-year-old female with an allergic reaction. This is where we're giving her the overview of everything that we just did, correct? Yep. So you start okay. off with the chief complaint, right? So you'd start off with like 19-year-old female, difficulty, you know, difficulty breathing, swelling, hives, 
So we don't, because we don't say allergic reaction, we would say possible allergic reaction, right? Okay. Uh, our field impression. All right, go ahead. All right, so the 19-year-old female with a possible allergic reaction, her, she's got noticeable swelling of her face with hives and difficulty breathing. Okay. Um, we've given her the non-rebreather mask. Um, okay. hmm, where am I at? At, what, at okay. what rate did you have that non-rebreather set to? The highest rate. I don't know the answer to that question. 15. <laughs> 15. 15. Okay. Now, some of them do go up to like 25, but I just say 15 liters a minute or 100% okay. oxygen, 15 liters a minute. Mm. Okay. And then what else? Okay. And then um, her initial vital signs were 90 over 60, 120 was her rest. Uh, wait, 120 pulse. That's not the pulse. 30. Yep. Oh, it is? Okay. Um, her respirations are at 20 and they're shallow. Um, her oxygen was at 92 at the original room air. Or do you want to say okay. the SPO2? No, that's so, yeah. So I would say SPO2 was 92% 92. 92. on room air. Okay. And then, uh, and then we gave her oxygen upon, you know, all of her interventions. And then I would give her, her improved vital signs or a second set of vital signs. Okay. And her lungs were wheezy whenever we listened to her lungs. And then after her reass not the reassessment. Yeah, the reassessment. Um, after giving her oxygen and was 100 over 70, her pulse was 110, her respirations were 24, and her SpO2 was 95. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll take we'll take care of her from here. Just uh just go set her back in uh triage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have a good day. Bye. All right. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you very much, ma'am. All right, so review question number one. The signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction are, are caused by the release of what? Hold your, hold your answers. All right, go ahead, let, her, let them rip. It's all right. All right. Good job. E is correct. All right, so the negative effects associated with anaphylactic shock are the result of, of what? A, B, C, or D? Hold your answers. All right, go ahead. Like it. C is correct. So you're called to a local, this is more like how a, this is how a, uh, NREMT question would kind of be set up like you're called to a local baseball park for a 23 year old man with difficulty breathing. He states that he ate a package of peanuts approximately 30 minutes ago and denies any allergies or past medical history. Uh, your assessment reveals widespread uticaria, tachycardia and blood pressure of 90 over 60 millimeters of mercury. You can hear him wheezing. Even without a stethoscope, you should be most suspicious of a what? Right. Awesome. Got a lot of C's here. Answer them up. Yep. 
Let me see. All right. I'm sure everybody's asking this. I wanted to wait um, when we saw it the first time. What is a wheel? A, B, C, or D? Hold your answers. Hold your answers. All right, go ahead. Hey, so insect stings device calls a wheel, which is a raised, swollen, well-defined area of skin. You are treating a woman who was stung numerous times by hornets. On the assessment, you note that some of these stingers are still embedded in her skin. You should do what? A, B, C, or D? Hold your answers. All right, go ahead. Answer is B. Good job. All right. So in closing, your does anybody have any questions for me concerning today's lecture? If not, then your class code for tonight is going to be 1993. 1993 is your class code for tonight. Make sure you do your attendance form. All right, Saturday, September 2nd, 2023. So Saturday, uh, got chapter 21, allergy and anaphylaxis emergencies. We're talking about tonight. And chapter 22, toxicology, which we'll go over Thursday will be due. So 21 and 22 will be due on Saturday. Uh, up next, as as I just stated, chapter 22, toxicology. Okay. Don't forget 1993. Oh, what happened in 1993? That's right. Other than some very famous events, uh, very notorious and famous events. All right, so in 1993, the Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education uh, begins accrediting emergency medicine residency programs. So the Accreditation of Emergency Medicine residency, residency Programs by the Accreditation Council of the Graduate Medical Education ensured the standardization of quality and consistency in the training of emergency medicine physicians. The accreditation process establishes rigorous educational standards, curriculum requirements, and the evaluation criteria for residency programs, ensuring the graduates are well prepared to provide high quality emergency care. 1993. All right. All right. One more time. Does anybody have any questions about tonight's lecture before I jump up off here? or stop recording is what I mean. All right, if not, then I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. If you don't have anything for me, feel free to hop on off. I really appreciate y'all coming by tonight, and I'll see y'all on Thursday.